Hi, my name is Kanisha Hill and I am the president and CEO of Power7 Inc. Power7 is a nonprofit ministry for women in Sunrise, Florida. And power actually began before power actually began. Power stands for peaceful, obedient women encouraging righteousness. And then, of course, God's number is seven. So seven for completion. And so what happened was back in 2010, I had attended a family event. And um, I had a family member who was in college who had gotten into some trouble. And the family decided to get together to pray and, and just warfare on the behalf of that family. And so um, my I now know as she's my cousin. I found out I met her that night. My cousin, she had began to pray. And this was my first witness of seeing the Holy Spirit move. This was my first time seeing someone speak in tongues. So I didn't know anything and it was all brand new to me. So my cousin and I began to pray for the woman of the house. And then after she was praying over her, she immediately came to me immediately. And she said these words to me. She said, let it go. It's time to let it go. And I had immediately started crying. And it was because, number one, how did she know what was going on? I wasn't even thinking about what was going on. But you can't hide anything from the Holy Spirit. And so she came to me and she hugged me. And when she hugged me, and spoke to me and spoke into my life. And she told me to let these let this go. That is, I have no control over what happened in the past. But I can prophesy over my future. And so I started crying and I felt weak. Like that hug sucked suck virtue. It sucked something out of me. But it was a release that, that had gotten out of me. And so I said, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, whoa. And so she had given me some scriptures to read and she said to me, you're going to start a woman's nonprofit. And I'm thinking to myself, nah, I'm good. Like, mm, I don't think so. Because like, it was like women, it was either you liked me or you didn't like me. And I just, I couldn't, you know, I just didn't ever know what the situation was or whatever. But I did notice that a lot, a lot of women would come to me and talk to me, the younger women. They would come to me, tell me about stuff in their relationships, all their business, about jobs and careers. Or like everyone always wanted to come and just talk to me and ask me for advice. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything. There's no kind of wisdom or nothing. But it was something that God was preparing me for. He was preparing me for ministry. And so um, going forward, my husband and myself, we became saved. We confessed. We then found uh, our home church and we um, prayed and fast, got our children involved in ministry or whatever going forward. And it was a particular family member that, I, that we had, a young lady. And I had said to my husband, um, you know, I think I feel in my spirit like something happened to her. And he said to me, you think so? And I'm like, yeah, I think something happened happened to her or whatever. And then we then found out years later and that she had been molested by a family member. And I knew it was something because it was a it was a spirit that was so familiar to me because that was how I acted and reacted with people in relationships. And so over time, you know, she and I developed a relationship and I would minister to her and, you know, we would pray and fast and we were going to the same church and just life began to just be so much peaceful for all of us. So moving forward, um, so in 2010, I was having a conversation with my sister and she said, she's like, I needed some advice on um, a situation, but she hadn't told me what the situation was. And so then I'm just like, you know, ministering to her and like, God is going to take care of you. And what happened was earlier that week, she had gotten to a really bad car accident with her, with her eldest daughter. And she was actually pregnant with her second daughter. And so she was home. Like, when I tell you, that you the car was totaled. And, like, they should have been dead. But they weren't. Not a scratch. Nothing. No, nothing. She had an air burn, an air, um, airbag burn on her wrist. 
That was it. And that was minimum. And so she only had to go to the hospital because she was pregnant, but they released her. Baby was fine, no problems. And so then we were talking or whatever, and I'm ministering to her, and I go to her, and I begin to have a vision. And so the vision, I see a big boardroom, a big room with a big brown table, and I could see chairs around the table. I couldn't see who was sitting in the chairs, but I see that it was someone in the chairs because the chairs would move. And then on the far side of the room, it was a big white board. And on the board, it was my sister's name written in red. And it looked, it didn't look like, but it was blood. Her name in all caps, written blood. And then I see um, these lines start to develop under each letter of her name. And then the, the words start to make out on what they were. Well, those five things were the five situations that she had been trying to figure out what to do like should i do this should i do that or whatever and those were the items that the enemy was going to use against her so what i had tapped into i had tapped into hell hell was literally having a board meeting on how to take my sister out the car accident was supposed to take her out and it didn't work because she's covered by the blood of jesus and so he the enemy then thought that I could use these five situations, maybe not to take her out, but definitely to get her to be distracted. And so going forward, when we saw those five things, she was then able to warfare. And so was I be able to warfare against those things that she wasn't going to stress about them. She wasn't going to worry about them. That she was going to let God do what he had to do for her. And he did. And so... At that point, I am then now having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. I hear the Holy Spirit say, okay, Kanisha, it's time to share your story. And I'm like, no, I'm good. And so what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do, the Holy Spirit gave me instructions. He said, okay, I want you to invite these six young women to your house, serve them breakfast, and share your story. I'm thinking, nope. I'm good. I don't want to. Um, I have forgiven a person who harmed me when I was younger. I had moved on and surrendered that situation to God. And I'm like, I'm good. Holy Spirit was like, no. So I am having an argument with the Holy Spirit. And you know how that ends up. So needless to say, he had given me instructions on to invite these women. I then set a date. I then invite them all over and um. The four, only, only four women was able to come. And so they come to the house. I had to go pick up two of the young ladies. They, we go, we pray, and we eat. I share my story with them and what happened to me. And I share my what God had done for me afterwards, the peace he gave me. Because I didn't really understand why I needed to have these girls over here. And so what happened was four, these four ladies were all either raped, molested, or abused in some type of manner or fashion. I had no idea, no idea that this happened to these girls because these women were not my personal friends. These were actually friends of my sister. And so I just knew that I had to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit led me to do. And so we go and we share this and everyone shares their story confidentially. And it just opened up my eyes that it's so many women out here that are hurting. So many women out here that are broken. So many women out here who don't have any kind of support, you know, and they need assistance. And so it just broke my heart. And one of the young ladies, it just opened my opened my eyes in a different kind of capacity. She had been roofied and raped while on videotape, and the videotape was out for distribution, which is how she how a person saw the tape and saw that it was her, and then told her about the tape. You could actually go and find the tape, the footage, and watch this. That is sickening that is hurtful and that's something that she's going to have to explain to her children when they when they 
get older about what happened to her. Like that's a lot to deal with. But I tell you that that day she got some peace about it. She got some grace about it. And because of that happening, that's when power developed. And so moving forward um, after that day, um, I would host events like that at my house going forward and and well, we would go to the park and 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 pray and talk or whatever. And so this is that's what power is. Power is to encourage one another. It is to uplift your sisters in Christ and even those who have not come into the knowledge of Christ. Because I'm not going to not aid someone because they don't believe in Christ. There are so many people broken and even broken because of false teachings or because of things that were said in a church house, you know? And so we have to be careful with what we say and do to people because their salvation is depending on us. And so I am just so very grateful that um, God is using me to help these women, to aid these women, because I'm, if it's, even if it's just for sowing a seed and I don't see the manifestation of the seed eventually, it's fine. I'll see that when I get to heaven. I'm not trying to do these things so that I, it's it's glory for me. No, it's for God. I am a servant of him. I am working for him. Power is not my ministry. Power is a ministry for God. And, you know, and I hope to be able to help many, many more women. I hope to be able to go and 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 share the word. And what happened was I did a very fervent prayer and I said, okay, God, I need to be able to do power full time. I need you to take me off my job. I need you to provide everything that I need so that power can be full time. And I prayed this prayer and I'm not joking. The opportunity came that I was able to leave my job, get a severance pay for six months. I was able to keep my health insurance. I was able to continue doing undergraduate studies for my family if they needed to, a master's degree as well. I was able to continue to receive, to, to do my 401k and have the company match my 401k. And I did not have for six months after I left. And so I prayed this prayer to God and it came to pass. So I can do, de I decree and declare and believe I officially, officially was able to retire from my job at the age of 30. I was able to retire from the world. I'm going to still work for God, but retiring for the world, clocking in and out a nine to five, a 10 to six, no more going forward. It's just straight ministry for God. I thank God for sustaining me. I thank God for allowing me to have a husband to understand this vision and continue to support me daily, pray for me daily, invest in me daily. I praise the Lord for him. And I praise the Lord for all those out there who are searching, who are hurting, that there is peace in God. All you have to do is go with, a, with, a, a, with your heart a clear heart with good intentions and put your petition out there. Ask God what he, ask God for what you want and he will do it for you. If it's his will, he will do it for you. I 100% believe it. It probably sounded like I was talking and reckless when I said, okay, I don't want to work past 30. I was 29 years old and I walked off my job and was able to start this ministry and God has been keeping me at this day of this video. Power is two years old. We've wanted nothing. We've lacked nothing. God has provided. God is the true living God in Jesus Christ's name. God loves us. God wants the best for us. That is my story. That is my power story. You can click subscribe to the channel. Write the comments. You can email me at kanisha at power 7 You can um, uh, you can go to my website, www.power7inc.com, and you can contact me on there. 
I have I do prayer line every third Thursday of the month. You're more than welcome. I have a Facebook page. You can find me on Facebook at Power Seven Inc. And just um, you know, let me know if you need anything. I'm looking forward to helping as many people as I can. And I just want to put it out there that I believe power is not just going to be just for women. It's for men too. It's for men too. Once power for the women section, you know gets a little bit more story we have a foundation then i will be able to tap into the men and aid the men but i'm not going to turn anybody away i have events all the time prayer line all the time call me text me i will call you i will pray with you anytime find you look at the youtube channel i me mean, on facebook i'm on instagram as well god loves all of us he loves all of us i hope that this video helps somebody I hope that this video reaches someone who just thinks that I don't know how I'm going to move on. I've been there. I've had the suicidal thoughts. I've had the, the um, felt pain and, and, and hurting and felt alone. I've had it. been there, done that. God delivered me. He is a just God. He is an on-time God. He will come when you need him. He ha And he has his people out there to serve you, to aid you, to help you with whatever you need. So I love you all. Let me know what you think about the video. And I just, I'm just so grateful. I want everyone to have a blessed day. And I thank you. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you so much for everything. And I love you all. Have a blessed day.